I haven't watched Get Out and I've had the Blu-ray for like two years. Get Out is like, it's, it's a, a watchable, a very, very watchable movie. Because there are movies that are good and then there are movies that are fun. Get Out is good and fun. It's like, a, you know, a John Wick or an Inception or something like that. It's not like, a, you know, the artist where you're going to have to sit down and I know this is going to be good, but I have to focus on really appreciating it. It's, it's good and entertaining moment to moment. It's not like the lobster where you have to meet it halfway. You don't even, you don't have to meet it halfway. You have to meet it like 10% of the way there. Quotation marks, fun. It is fun. It's fun. I'm not saying it's fun like, you know, your favorite movie of all time, which is probably National Treasure. What I mean, I guess maybe a better descriptor would be that it's not dry. Adaptation is goaded. Adaptation, low key, not my favorite Charlie Kaufman movie, but probably the best Charlie Kaufman movie. Also an insane Nicolas Cage performance. I'm thinking of ending things is better. Yeah, if you're like looking for a sleep aid, I would personally really recommend uh, something like I'm thinking of ending things. If you're looking for a movie that squanders an incredible cast, including Jesse Plemons, Tony Collette, David Thewlis, then yeah, I would definitely recommend watching I'm thinking of ending things. If you're looking to watch a, a two and a half hour long movie that requires you to read four hours of analysis after the movie to understand what they were trying to communicate, then I would really recommend watching something like I'm thinking of ending things. Ass to your take. Go back to film school. Go watch Wavelength, a 45 minute long movie that starts with a zoomed in shot of a door, slowly zooms out to reveal an apartment, pivots slightly, and then zooms in on another door. It's one of the most remarkable films ever made. If you don't like it, oh, sorry, sorry you're dumb, apparently. Sorry you're stupid and couldn't appreciate it. The vibes were off the chart. You don't even understand that movie has some of the best key gripping of all time. It also has, ironically, some of the worst best boy work I've ever seen. However, I'm not gonna hold that against it. It broke new ground. My favorite film? Mm, I would have to say Fritz Lang's uh, German sci-fi classic Metropolis. And then number two, mm, The Wolf of Wall Street. And number three is The Dark Knight. Number four, I would have to say, is uh, the Lumiere Brothers train approaching uh, the screen. That one, it broke new ground in cinema. Number five, I'd say Whiplash has definitely got to be up there. Somewhere else in the top ten, I mean, personally, I think the American Film Institute overrates Citizen Kane a little bit, although I do appreciate, you know, what it did for, for film at the time when it was released. But sure, maybe number seven. I would say number eight, um, probably Independence Day or Jurassic Park 1. Number nine, I'm thinking that maybe that would be Adam's Family Values. I know a lot of people prefer the original, but I like Joan Cusack's turn as uh, Fester Adams' fiance. What even was that bit? That's the, built, that's the bit of the 23-year-old man who comes into Twitch chat to talk about how, how dumb my film takes are. His favorite movie is something that he is not actually his favorite movie. He simply uses it to signal to other people that he pays very close attention to how respected film is. And then his second favorite movie is actually his favorite movie and it stars Christian Bale as a man who's also a bat at night.